Welcome to Global Banking and Finance Review Awards. Global Banking and Finance Review is a leading brand name in the world of finance and banking. Their awards were created to recognize companies of all sizes that are prominent in particular areas of expertise and excellence within the global financial community. This time, Global Banking and Finance Review is pleased to offer Financiamiento Progresimos an award for Best SME Finance Company Mexico 2016. Progresimos is based in vibrant Mexico. Despite the vastness of Mexico City, there is a large countrywide rural community, and it's here that Progresimos is extremely active. The bank supports microfinance for the rural segment, offering products, services, and high value added business. It seeks to foster a culture of productive credit use, both with groups and individuals. The bank offers advice on saving habits without losing sight of the importance of giving shareholders an adequate return on their invested capital. Recently visiting the London Stock Exchange Studios to receive the award, Chairman and CEO Rafael Moreno Valle. The awards were presented by Ocean Kavanagh and Lynn Quamby. And later, Raphael spoke about the bank's success story. Raphael, thank you so much for coming to London. And indeed, congratulations on the award as well. Well, my privilege to be here and my privilege to receive the award. I'm very, very thankful to you. Well, we'd love to know more about your organisation, if we may. And uh, the first question, uh, what do you think you've done right to actually win that award? What are the, the, the things that have made it most effective? I think that... that uh, the thing that we have done right is that we identified the real needs of the base of the pyramid in Mexico. What happens is that there are hundreds, perhaps a couple of thousand organizations that are family owned, family operated, and that only serve small communities. But these organizations lack equity, lack systems, lack funding. So they can only grow as far as the friends and family can support the effort. We found out that working with them through co-financing would make all the difference because we could provide them funding, we, we provide them systems, and we provide them training. And they know the people which we don't know. They know the people, they know their needs, and they know how can they best help them without overlending to them. I see. So in fact, a comprehensive knowledge of their needs and requirements is very important. Be because they live in those communities and there is no way that someone coming from the outside of the community could understand and could know all the things that these people know. So we decided that the way to go about doing micro lending in Mexico in the rural sector was through strategic alliances. And the strategic alliances had to be done with the little organizations that were w well rooted in their communities. That's exactly what we mean by strategic alliance. We do not know whom to lend to, but we do have systems, we have equity, we have access to funding. So we complement each other. and. The problem is that uh, many of these organizations reach a point where the families cannot continue growing. Their sphere of influence is very limited. Okay, So you can only develop them as far as they can go in terms of knowledge of the community. And that's the end of it. So you have to find very many of these to grow a significant business. And indeed, looking at some of those smaller organizations, small to medium enterprise groups, SMEs, what would you say the challenges and opportunities were for them in Mexico these days? 
I think that that uh, on the side of the of the opportunities, there the 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 base of the pyramid is underserved in Mexico, without any doubt. Particularly in the rural sector, it is over uh, over lent in the cities and in the suburbs, but uh, the big uh, micro lending companies do not like to go to small towns, to small communities. Those are underserved. That's where we think the market offers an opportunity. Now, in terms of challenges, first challenge, security. In this little community, security is a problem. And we have to be aware of the fact that there is a risk. And, and uh, no way of, of neglecting the, the, the problem that they are facing. In addition to that, uh, absorbing technology and training and systems is not an easy task. It is not an easy task. Then what happens in small family-owned businesses the head of the family decides to retire, and that's the end of the business. And what happens in, at that point in time is that the head of the family tells us, buy me out, but continue employing my family. That's how we have acquired branches. We have never opened a de novo branch, never, never. Mm -hmm. We have. The branches we have, we have about 30 right now, is because we have been forced to buy them from our strategic partners. I see. So what you actually have is uh, these very small organizations, and they're very family-based in many cases. I, I, I will say that in all cases, they are family-based. That, that's, the, that's the nature of the business. So it's important to have a good understanding of, of their requirements and the issues they personally have. Absolutely. You have to have very good understanding of the issues they have. And, and um, uh, if you were trying to organize a lending operation in one of these communities, it would take you years, years to learn whom to lend to and how to go about the business. Yet for them, it's natural, mm -hmm. it's absolutely natural. And, but but at, at the same time, the, the potential size that they can reach is small. Uh, and what kind of products do you provide to help SMEs uh, get the financing they require? Actually, what we do is co-lending. We tell them, you are lending to a hundred uh, people at uh, ten dollars each, okay? Because you are limited to one thousand dollars that you have. Why don't we do this? Of the hundred people that you are lending to, instead of you lending them ten dollars each, lend them five, and we will lend them five directly through you, but directly to the same people. Therefore, you will have another $500 to lend to other people. Okay? Mm -hmm. So instead of serving 100 persons, you can serve 200 persons. That's what, what co-financing means. We are not lending to the organization. We are lending to the people directly through the organizations. And if I was trying to set up my own SME in Mexico, yeah. what, what kind of things would I be told to think about, uh, to, to consider for, for before applying for financing? I'll say that, that you will have to define the market that you would like to serve. As I said before, cities and suburbs are Overserved. You and, and to try to make uh, 
a, a, a running business in, in, in those areas is impossible, absolutely impossible, because you'll be fighting with the giants of the business that have very low cost of funding, that have excellent systems, that have training programs, have, they have everything. So you cannot compete with them. Now, going to the small towns on your own would take you forever to develop a business. That's why we think that our model has been successful. So rural communities, much more difficult. Mm -hmm. Far more difficult. Yes. Far more difficult. In many of these rural communities, they don't even speak Spanish. <laughs> Dialects and, 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 and different forms of, uh, of uh, local languages, presumably. Yes, they, yeah. they speak the local language, yes. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So fascinating there, and, and I know you mentioned a moment ago at the beginning of this uh, discussion about strategic alliances. Now tell us a bit more about those and, and the, how you've gone about establishing them. We have a process first for identifying local organizations that could be attractive as strategic partners. There is a whole process to identify them, then we approach them and we present to them our product, co-financing, and we tell them this is what co-financing means. It is not an easy sale because they are not used to it. So it takes time. You have to spend time explaining to them how that would work. Once they understand it, uh, they usually like to try it on a very small scale. And so between the time when you first identify a potential strategic partner and the time when it becomes I would say, an efficient vehicle for delivery to the communities it takes about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. So time is important. You, know, you have to allow for those periods of time to establish a worthwhile operation. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you start operating very quickly, but at a very small scale. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you are operating at a small scale, you are losing money. It's not until you reach a certain volume of business that you start making money. But if you are not prepared to help your strategic partner develop into the new mode, you're losing your time. Mm -hmm. You just have to do it. So it takes you about two and a half years. You will lose money. It, you're investing. You're developing a market. That's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And given uh, that you have been very successful in, in establishing uh, these operations up and down the, the country, what are your future plans for development and growth? How would you like to see things developing? I'll tell you uh, some product that we have in mind. For example, a couple of months ago, we started lending to sugarcane growers through a strategic partner that is based in a sugar mill that knows the, 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 the sugar cane growers, that has all the experience but does not have the money and the systems. So we just uh, started working with them a couple of months ago. That is for us a new experience. Then I'll give you another example. Uh, we are in the process of, of, of finishing up the negotiations and documentation to start lending to small fishermen. Again, through uh, their own organization. So really, uh, these groups are, you know, you, you actually look at strate strategic planning for, for fisher groups, for, for uh, sugarcane growers and so on, and identify the needs there, yeah. But not, no, we do not look for the sugar cane growers or the fishermen. We look for the organization that is lending to them yes. and has the ability to grow. That's mm -hmm. what we look for. Well, I hope the sugar cane and everything else is a sweet success. <laughs> <laughs> and Rafael, thank you so much for coming uh, to London and talking to us. And once again, congratulations on the, the, the award. Thank you well. very much, Phil. Very nice Excellent. seeing you. Lovely to talk to you. Thanks a lot. Thanks.